Hello, this is Philip Eklund from Sierra Madre Games. And, and hello, this is Jürgen Manker from Ion Game Design. And we're here to talk about a new project, uh, the latest and uh, in the PAX series of games. And this game was designed by my son, Matt Eklund, and developed by me, Phil Eklund. Both very great guys. Yes, yes. And uh, so this is our vision of the future, um, even if, um, uh, you know, we have different uh, views of the future, my son and I. To say so, the least. <laughs> yeah. But um, we both have, which is somewhat unusual or extremely unusual for um, games and for the population in general, have something of an optimistic view of the future. That um, humans will continue to uh, progress and live longer and be happier and uh, more fulfilled and free in the future, or at least have the potential of, of this. Uh, in this game, um, I don't want to say it's optimistic or utopian, but uh, because there is the possibility for dramatic failure, you can end in chaos and nuclear destruction in this game. And uh, we have certainly seen games like that. But if uh, uh, with um, good play and some foresight, then... Um, Humanity and yourself will prosper in the future and solve uh, many of the Today's challenges problems, yeah. and, and problems that there are uh, and there are the cards in themselves are have a, have a kind of positive focus or, or Some of them may have problems on them. They may have heat that, that Yeah, yeah like some are controversial. controversial But but all in all it's, it's a focus on uh, opportunities and, and, and uh, possibilities yeah, and somewhat near future. These are not that distant extrapolations. We don't have really wild and crazy, um, uh, I don't know, faster than light travel or, or, or um, quantum cloning or something like that. These are things which are being studied and developed now. So it's a kind of a near, near future. And it's not only ideas. We're looking at um, both political ideas and technological ideas and you mentioned the problems yeah and um, we have some chits we cut out uh, uh, associated with four spheres in the game these are four arenas of the future more or less and um, the first world has a, a few problems which could be solved um, they work victory chits and um, Here's the developing world, the cloud, and space, outer space. So these are, have a lot, um, they're more developed in these um, emerging spheres, I'll call them, uh, the cloud and space. This is at the game start. Yeah, this is a, a setup. And um, besides the problems, which I'll just name a few, We've got aging and climate change and pollution, um, interface problems in the cloud, um, earthbound in space. How do we get off the planet um, that's, that's shackled us to the earth and, and expand into the beyond? So, um, but there's not only the problems, the problems are even more significant in this game are the what's called the barriers and these cards show the infrastructure a sample infrastructure of each of these spheres in in space you've got um, um, the the ISS and NASA and um, you've got cloud providers so there are different institutions listed on here but there's also barriers um, things like human atrophy or data hackers or corruption in the developing world. And um, that makes it, the barriers are what makes it extremely expensive to try to um, uh, invest in this sphere. So if you have, if you start installing 
of freelance employees into these problems to try to help uh, these barriers to try to help solve them, then you'll lower the cost for everyone really um, in order to enter into the sphere. And if you manage to start a company, I'm player blue here, so maybe, maybe I'll make a company right here in the developing world to solve women's health. And that means there'll be one less barrier. There'll only be, right now I've got this one with a temporary um, worker. A freelancer worker employee here. Um, and um, so there's only one, two, three, four. So the entry cost to try to um, commercialize in the developing world is less now through the efforts, uh, entrepreneurial efforts. Of all players. Of all the players. It's a... Um, and would I have been there too, for example, solving uh, uh, education? Then uh, there would be only three. That's right. Which would be as expensive as going into the first world uh, at the moment. Yes, so... the And um, like other PAX games, you have regimes. And you want to show some of these regimes yes, here? Yes, the regimes are the World Bank, uh, Computing, uh, Assembly, Paradigm Shift, Trans Biology, and Group Dynamics. And it starts uh, with actually not the World Bank because that's changed. In yeah, States. Matthew prefers um, globalization, globalization rather so, than. So it starts with globalization. And maybe he changed other of the names here? No, uh, I think right. they're okay. Right, Th these are the, the different um, regimes that can... We start with globalization. So these regimes are uh, similar to what there are in other PAX games, like PAX Porfiriana. Um, they have really global effects, and um, the... Uh, for instance... If we have green, the, this uh, group dynamics regime, all the hiring costs are zero, and um, group dynamics patents are worth double, and um, it, if, this is, uh, if this is active at the end of the game, when a tipping point comes up, in, then um, each developing world company or problem is one VP. So you are awarded according to the dominant sphere at the end. So if you're heavily invested in space and you want space to be the final frontier, um, then you'll have to try to take care that... The, which would be the assembly... Um, which would be the assembly um, regime. Then you have to try to take care to manipulate the splay in order to... Um, in order that the game ends in the outer space regime. And we should show what a, what a splay looks like. <laughs> that, so, was a, that was an unordered splay. That was an unordered splay, but um, we're supposed to have them stacked down, well, like this, actually. This way Kareem wants it, and maybe another one there. And here's exoskeletons. Um, what if uh, humans were able to develop? Now these are cards. This display is going to get longer and longer. And it shows by the pairings of colors what cards are, uh, what technologies are more viable, which are, which you can commercialize easier. So the idea here is, is as you syndicate these ideas and as you develop, commercialize them, then they're available to all the players now. You'll get your own benefits. Maybe you'll be setting up companies w with these or there'll be impacts that are listed along here that give you advantages. But you, this is really helping um, all the players but hopefully it will be um, steering the world in the in civilization in the direction you want it to go. And this is to, which is a little different from other PAX games. Uh, I would say that this is you don't have your, your tableau here. You don't have a tableau. You've got splay, a universal tableau. One tableau or splay for, for, for all players, and and you get 
a very good benefit when you take the card, but then it's in here and then it's uh, affecting everyone equally. Yes. I should mention that for Pax Emancipation, um, I stole this idea for that because Pax Emancipation yeah, yeah. is a game where you try all the players are trying to cooperate to end slavery so having a global splay that um, everyone benefits from uh, made sense this yeah. is this is uh but in uh, fact it's, it's actually a co-op thing but oh, here yeah. this is not a co-op game this is not a co-op game you are in competition to have to solve the world's problems and to have the be the master of the dominant sphere at the end of the game. And um, I'll mention too that uh, these are Matt's ideas of how to run the economy. Um, these are player sheets here, everyone gets it. And you've got workers, which as you've already seen, can be employed in various spheres. They can be employed in syndicating ideas as inventors and the like. Um, but you'll have to watch your finances. There are three categories, ca um, capital, wealth, and debt. And these are also, this is also stolen um, and reused in Pax Emancipation. Um, so it's very easy if you don't keep managing your um, finances to um, get into a position where it'll take you a long time to get out of debt. But there's three, what's interesting about this, what I found fascinating was there was sort of three strategies of playing with this. Some players get along fine and they win and um, being constantly in debt and just getting by on the benefits uh, they get from special abilities or commercializing so that they can do the next project. But others, like myself, always want to try to stay out of debt and keep in capital. Um, and still others will want to invest heavily in patents and sell patents off and not worry about their liquid capital. Um, it's, it's really an interesting uh, mechanic yeah. for... Both, um, both gameplay-wise and simulation-wise, I must say. It's a very nice little thing which, which drives the game. Yeah, so let's put a couple more companies out here just to show um, maybe maybe you'll be employed at my company. This is uh, <laughs> this is, um, well, normally maybe the other way around. or maybe the other way around. Um, if if the uh, company uh, needs work, then they'll accept anybody who comes along, yeah. even an opponent, and then you could produce um, useful work. You um, start up here and you move your, each time a employee goes one step down and generates the work that you may need to um, commercialize or, um, or research ideas. Are these ideas. Uh, somewhat different between the different players? There is some, no, well, not not a lot. Because the setup is different. This is a setup, and I have more capital in the start as a doctor than you has as a uh, you have as a blog blogger. Yes, which is simulation wise probable. <laughs> yes, yes, but the the like only this. the only real asymmetry. Yeah, right now you've got a lot of capital that gives you a big advantage. And the reason is the order of play is listed here, and I go before you. All right. And the very first play is a first player advantage because there may be gold. Yep. The, the, each of these cards have not, each of these cards, some of them are much more valuable than others depending on the splay here. And it changes all the time, but they also have very valuable and strong abilities. If you're just syndicated an uh, idea, um, some of these abilities could be worth gold. So the first player um, has has an advantage, and that's offset by this yeah. uh, asymmetrical starting condition. And that's that's the important because this is, as we didn't even mention, uh, well, in other Pax games such as Pax Porfiriana, you can inv you can put stuff out to like invest in something, but it's a very passive thing. It's just yes. going to give you a little bonus uh, if someone else if someone takes. else does it. But here, if you're out here and, and, and doing 
entrepreneur stuff, I would say it simulates maybe or, or researching these things or, or taking for prototypes and yes. to make it's Most called right. syndication is trying to form a, a group or, or a company around this idea yeah, such as cobots here for, for example yeah cobots um, and then then I actually have which is uh, illustrated on the cover by the way yes the, that's uh, Johanna the guy, did the cover Johanna and, did the cover Johanna yeah, the she, she's she's fantastic and um, so yes and perhaps an opponent might go into cobots as well and um, but cobots time may not have come you have to look at the two colors of this um, one's associated with space and the other with the cloud for cobots and you'll need to have in display in order to make it viable uh, you'll need to have that combination so to see when it the, its time has come so you got to sort of plan ahead and these costs here uh, indicate how much money you've got to spend in order to commercialize it. As things go away, the market comes down as usual in PAX games. games yeah. And um, so, you, so the, you'll be interested in the cheap ones, but you'll see really good, ex maybe they're too expensive for you, but you wait until they, but you don't want to wait too long because your opponent yeah. perhaps also sees and, opportunities. And you need both these two. You need a green, a blue. Uh, sorry, a blue orange. But yeah, is that the two bottom one or anywhere in the display? It, it's anywhere in the display. Any so pairing. Easier and easier. It becomes as the world gets developed. It becomes faster and faster, yeah. or more and more. Right now, it's kind of a struggle, especially in these emerging spheres, the cloud and space. Yeah. So I. Uh, um, I, I, I really, really like that little detail. There are many very intelligent details in this game, such as this one, with this little, little uh, which is a barrier in a way, but it also simulates the world. We're getting more and more technology, and things is going to be giving each other um, opportunities uh, when they're developed. And it makes the game uh, typically. It's it's a good way to build a game where you it becomes more and more uh, open and and. Uh, up for grabs, so to speak, and where the initial investment is something you, you should take opportunity to do, and the, it becomes a tense game in the end. And in the end, comes in the bottom half of this are the, the tipping points, which are the top of cards of the game, and that's when things are. And this up. is kickstarting this Sunday. This is starting a Kickstarter this Sunday, and this Sunday we say, but who knows when when you are watching. Uh, but uh, as we are uh, recording this, which is a Monday, mm -hmm. uh, we are recording it on this Sunday, which will be Sunday on Essen Spiel um, 2018. It will... Uh, October 28th? October 28th at 2.15pm Berlin time or Essen time. Uh, this will be launched on Kickstarter and the Kickstarter will run for only 20 days, I think. Only 20 days. Only 20 days. Okay. So grab it while you can. Yeah, well, we can't get too far in the future, or these cards will be <laughs> yeah, obsolete. obsolete. So yeah, new technology obsolete. will uh, yeah, yeah. Re overrun yeah. everything. Yeah. Well, everyone will have cobots in, 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 in two be, months. Yeah, there will be cobots backing this game. And exoskeletons? And exoskeletons backing this game, too. Yes. Yeah, and hi hyper telescopy. Yes. Hi yes. Hyper telescopy. No, no, you did fine the first attempt. Hyper yes. telescopy. Yes, using um, using the sun as a gravitational lens um, to look at uh, very distant things yeah. in exquisite detail, like so, your um, expedition Zeta or something. Oh, like my expedition Zeta. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, they might look at the at the ship sent away. That takes place in 1962, but. But they, oh well, I don't have to look backwards. Then. Then. <laughs> or see, that maybe really, nineteen sixty-two. I, I I knew it was retro, but I didn't think it was that it, retro. It is that retro? But okay. Uh, maybe they see the lost space ship somewhere using the hyper telescope. Okay. Well, issues of causality beside aside, that's uh, that's. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's, yeah. th that'll be an SN2, yes? That will be an SN2. Uh, there will be copies there to buy for the first time, and they are they are starting shipping the... the and this is like a monumental game. It has been a monumental effort, and it is a monumental game. Uh, I'm proud of it. Uh, 
Okay. This is transhumanity. Uh, this is transhumanity. We'll talk about expeditions at another time. Okay. All right. So, well, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you.